It's time, my friends, the PlayStation 5 is here, at last, a reason to smile in 2020. Whether you picked yours up on release or you're waiting to see if it's worth it, you'll probably want to know which games are worth playing. If you're not interested in knowing which games are worth playing, I'm not sure why you bought a games console, but it's not my place to judge. Uh, anyway, the point is, we're happy to provide a public service by ranking every PlayStation 5 launch game from worst to best. Contrary to what you may have assumed though, we did not stay up all night blitzing through every single game available for the new console. We have, however, carefully studied each game's critical reception and are therefore considered experts. The rules are similar to those from our Xbox Series X slash Xbox Series S list. Based on critical consensus, we will rank every PlayStation 5 launch game from worst to best. We're counting all of the games released on disc, including re-released PS4 games, as long as they're actually enhanced and don't just run better by default. We also won't be counting digital-only games, unless they are properly enhanced versions of PS4 games that were previously available on disc. Unlike our Xbox video though, things get a little more complicated when we define launch games. The PlayStation 5 never had a singular launch day. In some territories it was the 12th of November, while in others it was November the 19th. Rather than exclude the launch games specific to certain regions though, we are considering all games released between November the 12th and November the 19th to be PS5 launch games. How's that for an exciting intro to the video? <laughs> Let's rank them. I'm Ben. And I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and this is every PlayStation 5 launch game ranked from worst to best. Number 21. Godfall. 62% PlayStation 5. Did you know Godfall was the very first game confirmed for the PS5? Do you care? Probably not, but I thought it was interesting, so leave me alone. The game is published by Gearbox, but it was developed by Counterplay Games, which is a name that is not quite as familiar. The team includes developers who worked on Bioshock Infinite, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Overwatch, however, so there is a lot of talent behind Godfall. Does it live up to the promise of that talent? No. Absolutely not. Sorry to burst your bubble, but no. Critics slogged through its repetitive campaign and came out the other end begrudgingly pleased with its presentation and little else. They complained of technical issues, repetitiveness, and dull environments. One outlet called its story hilariously paper thin. There may be fun to be had here, but there's a lot more of it elsewhere. Number 20. Warhammer Chaos Bane Slayer Edition. 63%. PlayStation 4. Good news, PS5 owners. In addition to all of the great games from the previous generation that you'll be able to play in upgraded versions, you can play a deeply disappointing hack and slash as well. Warhammer Chaos Bane Slayer Edition is not without merit, but when compared to most of the games in the launch lineup, not without merit isn't much of a recommendation. Critics were underwhelmed, citing a lack of variety in the gameplay, the enemies, and even the loot, which you'd think the developers would have prioritised since loot is the entire point of the game. Common descriptions included words like generic, forgettable, and repetitive. Even those who enjoyed it conceded that its design was outdated and a bit too familiar. If you're a fan of the series or the genre, by all means pick it up, but don't expect it to jump to the top of your list of favourites. Number 19. NBA 2K21 68% PlayStation 4 Sports, eh? <laughs> Good old sports. Gotta love those. NBA 2K21 comes to the PS5 at launch, and thank the Lord for that. I simply don't know what I would have done without it. Basketball men dribbling across a basketball court with basketballs in their basketball hands? Really, what else could a person want? Alright, I admit I am probably not this game's target audience. I don't know the rules or the terminology or why the teams don't just sit down and settle their differences through polite conversation. I do, however, know the game's critical reception, and it wasn't great. Even the critics who liked it questioned its necessity, saying it's not worth a purchase at full price and that there's really no need to own it if you have NBA 2K20. Others complained of it being unbalanced, grindy, and irritatingly monetized. Sports, eh? Can't live with them. Can't, uh, can't understand them. Number 18. Maneater. 
68%. PlayStation 4. I'm not going to attempt the accent, I'm sorry. The thing about a shark is he's got lifeless eyes. Black eyes, like a doll's eyes. When he comes at you, he doesn't even seem to be living. Till he bites you, and those black eyes roll over white, and then you wish you were playing a much better game. Or at least one that made you feel appropriately powerful. Manita often feels less like you're playing as a shark and more like you're the chicken of the sea. It's not a terrible game, to be clear, there are no truly terrible games in the launch lineup for either console, but it by no means lives up to its stellar concept of shark carnage. If you go into the game knowing that, and you therefore expect silly fun with some humorous narration from Chris Parnell, you may end up enjoying it. Number 17. Watch Dogs Legion. 71%. PlayStation 4. Picture it. London, shrouded in misery. Now picture Watch Dogs Legion. <laughs> Satire. As a series, Watch Dogs has had its ups and downs, or more accurately, a down and an up. Legion seemed at first like it might be the best of the batch by a long shot, but the critics were not entirely convinced. They weren't sold on its driving mechanics and didn't think the ability to recruit NPCs added as much as it could have, so basically Watch Dogs didn't live up to its own potential, pretty much the story of the entire series. As with the previous two games, there's still a lot of fun to be had in spite of the flaws. Hacking your way through the city and interfering with countless daily commutes is enjoyable enough, even if it suffers from the hollow yet overstuffed design of many recent Ubisoft games. Oh, cool blimey, mate. Oh, mate, mate, mate. Number 16, No Man's Sky. 71% PlayStation 4. No Man's Sky promised PS4 owners so much and then thoroughly failed to live up to any of those promises. Unlike most of the tragedies of 2016, however, this one actually got better. Hello Games spent years bringing No Man's Sky closer to its original vision. It was an impressive comeback story and it doesn't seem to have stopped come back come backing. It doesn't seem to have stopped come backing. In the game's next generation update, do you get it? PS5 players will be able to gather in groups of up to 32, build larger bases than ever before, and enjoy the marvels of haptic feedback as they kill and or are killed by adorable flying robots. All of this is, of course, on top of the expected visual and performance upgrades. Is any of that enough to attract new players? It's hard to say, but exploring the infinite cosmos is not a bad way to break in your new console. Number 15. Bug Snacks. 73% PlayStation 5. What you see if you eat an entire brick of expired fudge, Bug Snacks is a first person adventure game starring critters that would be utterly terrifying if they weren't so adorable. However, the purpose of the game is not to snuggle up with them and scratch them behind the ears while they wag their tails like good boys. A huge missed opportunity, frankly, but rather to capture and document all of the different types. So it's cute and adorable and probably extremely tasty, but is it any good? Critics can't quite agree on that. It's been uniformly lauded for its premise and charm, but a few reviewers consider its gameplay to be shallow and unappealing. Others, of course, think it's a grand old time, referring to it as both engrossing and unforgettable. Your personal feelings on the game may well come down to your particular tolerance for whimsy. If you like what you see, though, give it a shot. Number 14. Observer System Redux. 77% PlayStation 4. If you like your narratives mysterious, your plagues digital, and your futures dystopian, Observer System Redux will be your feel-good launch game of choice. Move over, bug snacks. It was well received upon its initial release in 2017, with critics praising the characterization, which is indeed where the game shines. Saying too much would rob it of some of its mystery, but if you think you'd enjoy hacking into the brains of murder victims to solve cases and figure out what the heck is happening in general, you'll find a lot to like here. There are plenty of spookums along the way, but Observer System Redux is more haunting than it is actually frightening. It stars Rutger Hauer, which is appropriate as it pulls more than a little inspiration from Blade Runner, and this enhanced version adds more cases to untangle, giving you an even greater dose of its unsettling reality. Number 13, Fortnite, 78%, PlayStation 4. 
Only days before the PS5 launched, this unexpected game seemed to come out of nowhere. It was a complete surprise, and I couldn't wait to learn what it was. After doing some research, however, I found out that it has an active player base larger than the population of Earth. <laughs> Who'd have guessed? Okay, I'm kidding, but only because there's nothing I can say about Fortnite that you haven't heard already. And frankly, you already know whether you'll enjoy it or wish that you would never hear the word ever again. The Battle Royale Juggernaut is seeking to continue its domination into the next generation, and the odds are good that it will be able to. There haven't been many true threats to its status as king of the genre, and as long as it keeps giving players the addictive, nail-biting panic they understandably crave, and the ridiculous costumes and dances they also crave, for less understandable reasons, it's liable to keep going strong. Number 12. Sackboy A Big Adventure 78% PlayStation 5 Sackboy A Big Adventure sends the, now that I think about it, unfortunately named Sackboy on A Big Adventure. Not sure where they got the title from, but I suppose it's none of my business. This time around, the game is built around 3D platforming as opposed to the 2-ish D games in the Little Big Planet series. It also introduces 4-player co-op, which means you and 3 friends can be overcome by the game's adorable charm at the exact same time. Is it any good though? Well, the answer to that question is yes, even if it doesn't go very far beyond that. Critics have referred to the game as lacking in imagination, which is a real kick in the pants for anyone picking it up due to their fondness for Little Big Planet. On the whole though, it's being received as a competent and enjoyable platformer, and as far as I'm concerned, that is by no means a bad thing. That being said though, we can't blame anyone who had higher hopes than that. Number 11. Borderlands 3 78% PlayStation 4 if you haven't played Borderlands 3, why not? I want you to march right into the comments below and explain yourself. It's okay though, because you'll have your chance to dive into the game on the PS5 and get mountains of cell shaded viscera all over the inside of your pristine new console. The game has overall been well received, but that was sort of the point. It's a refinement of the formula rather than an enormous step in a new direction. If you have enjoyed the previous games, or you've had your interest piqued by the slaughter-happy gameplay loop, Borderlands 3 is well worth picking up, and if you do, I'll forgive you for skipping it on the PS4. <laughs> You're welcome. Number 10. Dirt 5 81% PlayStation 4 you know, every time I recklessly drive a vehicle across difficult terrain without any care for the safety of others or the consequences of my actions, I go to prison. And yet in games like Dirt 5, it's outright encouraged. Where's the justice in that? Anyway, time for some trivia. Dirt 5 has the shortest title of any PS5 launch game, saving the writer bags of time as they typed up this script. It's an off-roading, globe-trotting racer game with events unfolding around the world and many, many neck injuries. There is a story mode which certainly provides a compelling reason to drive in circles as quickly as possible, but the real draw is the multiplayer and the fact that weather patterns and seasons affect the events in-game. What I'm ultimately saying to you is that you won't soon tire of this racer. <laughs> I'm not even sure if that pun works, actually, so let's neither of us dwell on it. Moving on. Number 9. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. 81% PlayStation 4. What's your favourite thing about Assassin's Creed? The lovingly recreated environments? The gorgeous vistas? The opportunity to drain various historical figures of their blood? Whatever it is, you'll be sure to find it in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, or as we're destined to call it in the future, the one with the Vikings. Ubisoft has attempted to shape the game around player choice, with enemies behaving differently depending on the skills the player has unlocked. Is that enough to make the series feel fresh again? No, of course not. Don't be ridiculous. But is it fun? Overall, yes, but with the caveat that it's still Assassin's Creed. If you've abandoned the series several games ago because it all started to feel the same, Valhalla won't cause you to re-evaluate that stance. If you continue to enjoy the games though, and you always wanted to see the series in a Spangenhelm, Valhalla is the game for you. Number 8. The Pathless. 82% PlayStation 5 
The Pathless is the latest release from Annapurna Interactive, which means if you don't like the game, your friends will spend the rest of their lives assuring you that you just didn't get it. You take control of the hunter, stuck on a cursed island. So, wherever they held the fire festival, I suppose. You explore the area with your eagle friend, shooting things with your bow, solving environmental puzzles, and restoring light to obelisks, as you do. It was developed by the team behind Abzu, and like that game, The Pathless emphasizes the value of finding your own way forward. In other words, by not providing a path. So, it left players... Pa path... Uh, oh, I can't think of the word. Critics took issue with the fact that a number of the game's puzzles grind the experience to a halt, but aside from that, they were quite taken, singling out the bosses and the atmosphere for particular praise. Number 7. Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate Edition 82% PlayStation 4 the fighting game of choice for spinal column enthusiasts, Mortal Kombat 11 is launching beside the PS5 with an Ultimate Edition. As you might guess, this includes all of the DLC the game has received since its original release, and being as Mortal Kombat 11 was still releasing DLC as recently as October, newcomers can expect a lot of content. In all, there are 37 characters available, and boy do they each look beautiful inside and out. Mortal Kombat 11 continues the long-running franchise's story, and you will continue to ignore it because you're more interested in removing people's livers with your bare hands. Depending on the platform, the previous-gen versions of the game consistently scored in the 80-90% to 90 range, with most of the criticisms coming from the various performance issues. With the PS5's superior processing power, that concern is moot. Kill your friends today. Number 6. Astro's Playroom 83% PlayStation 5 a spin-off from the PS4 game we used to deafen fans in 2018. Astro's Playroom is built into your PS5, so really it's not a question of whether or not you should pick it up. You own it, and Sony will stalk you like the ghost from It Follows until you agree to play it. Astro's Playroom follows the sleek little robot last seen in Astrobot Rescue Mission as he... Well, as he climbs around inside of your PS5. I bet you thought it was just wires and circuits and other junk in there, but it's really a wonderland of control gimmicks, eh? Expand your mind. It's a great way of getting used to the DualSense controller, featuring a load of PlayStation-specific references and levels. A PS I Love You letter, if you will, but does it have staying power? It's essentially a free tech demo for a system you've already purchased, after all. It's fun, and it's impressive, but we're not sure how many people will be bothering with it even a week from now. I will. It's got a platinum trophy. Number 5. Planet Coaster Console Edition. 84% PC. If you're anything like me, you fantasize regularly about building a theme park without any toilets and laughing as the patrons dance around on one leg because they're too polite to relieve themselves behind the tilter whirl. Well, we're in luck, friends, because Planet Coaster Console Edition is here to let us do just that, inflicting all manner of injustices upon unsuspecting park goers who only wanted to enjoy a weekend away. Alternatively, you could play the game properly and try to make everybody happy, but what would be the point in that? Needless to say, the controls for this PC original have been entirely revamped for the console release, and critics so far seem to be getting on with them pretty well. There was also a large amount of content added to the original game, which is good, as one of the few criticisms of the PC version was that there wasn't quite enough room for customization. Number 4. Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales 85% PlayStation 5 Building an entire game around one of the characters that everybody hated playing as in the PS4 version of Marvel Spider-Man might sound like a very bad idea on paper, but now Miles has actually got, you know, abilities in that he can do more than walk slowly and restart from checkpoints. This game was without a doubt one of our most anticipated titles of the new generation. Fitting, really, since we're called Peter and Ben. Anyway, as you might have expected, Miles Morales doesn't quite measure up to its stellar predecessor, but beyond that, it is an excellent game, with even the least impressed critics promising that it is worth playing and manages to stand on its own merits. The Ultimate Edition of Miles Morales also includes Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered, an updated version of the best Spider-Man game ever made 
lead, according to our ranked list. Wait, since Miles Morales is out now, surely we're gonna have to delete that list and remake it from scratch. Certainly seems like the only rational thing to do. You better get writing, Philip. Number 3. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War 86% PlayStation 5 The first-person shooter series best played while listening to 11-year-olds dump obscenities into your ear, Call of Duty makes its inevitable jump into the new generation with Black Ops Cold War. It's set in the 1980s, with scenarios modelled after actual historical events, as you might expect. As you also might expect, you'll play through each of them once, and then spend the rest of your natural life being shot to death in multiplayer. Activision have announced that all of the game's DLC will be free, and I'm going to be very brave by saying that that is a good thing. They've also confirmed that they intend to find new ways to monetize the game down the line, and I now retract my previous statement. Critics are certainly enjoying it, however, heaping praise upon its narrative, its visuals, and what many of them are calling the series' very best zombie mode. How exciting. Number 2. Devil May Cry Special Edition 87% PlayStation 5 Devil May Cry 5 was a big success among those who wanted DMC to be good again. It originally released in 2019 to understandable acclaim using the engine from Resident Evil 7. Fitting, really, because that game was also heralded as a return to form. Devil May Cry 5 was lauded for its variety, its art design, and even its narrative, which is saying something for a game about kicking people's teeth out as spectacularly as possible. The question is, though, does it offer anything new on the PS5? Well, actually, yes. In addition to running at 120 frames per second, a huge disappointment, actually, as I was really hoping for 126, it adds a playable character, several new modes, additional environments, and includes all of the DLC from the original release. Critics praise the special edition for being the best version of one of the previous generation's best games. So yeah, it's pretty good, I guess. Number 1. Demon Souls 93% PlayStation 5 Known around these parts as the next 18 months of my life, Demon Souls is a welcome remake of the 2009 original that launched an entire genre. And don't rush to the comments to tell me I forgot about Kingsfield, okay? You never played those games. Nobody played those games. Stop it. Demon's Souls was understandably a bit rougher in its design than the subsequent Dark Souls, but that arguably gave it a lot of its own charm and identity. The remaster does its best to remain true to the original game's spirit, while still you know, fixing it. It adjusts inventory limits, adds a mirror mode, enhances the character customization, and its photo mode even adds the ability to pause the game, which means we'll be hearing for years about how that was both the best possible decision and worst possible decision the developers could have made. The critics adore it, with the lowest score at the time of writing being 90%. Does that mean you will love it too? Of course not! The Soulsborne games are notoriously stubborn and it's quite possible Demon Souls won't be your cup of tea. If you were looking forward to it though, you can rest assured that it's not just a remake done exactly right, it's the best launch game for your PS5, if not one of the best launch games ever. That brings the average score of the PlayStation 5's launch lineup to 77.62%. And there you have it, every PlayStation 5 launch game ranked from worst to best. Which game is your favourite? Were you disappointed by Godfall? Do you think that Sony or Microsoft had the better launch this time around? You have to choose, that's how the internet works. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. You can follow Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon? Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben, and I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.